Recently, Cecile Richards, Madam Chancellor of Planned Parenthood, has asked that women submit videos with the tagline, I have a say. I wanted to take her up on that offer, even though I'm not a woman, because I think that all people have a say in our country. Despite what you surely wish, Cecile, at least for now, I, as a Catholic priest and a man, have a say. My parents chose sacrifice over selfishness, and because they chose to give me life, I do have a say. You, of course, have worked very hard to push the total number of those in our country who never had a chance to have a say well above the 50 million mark, those who have been victims of abortion. You have also worked very hard to push that number even higher through, although you try to keep it secret, the number of those children who've been aborted through the use of contraception and the birth control pill. Thanks to you, many have never had a say, but I do. As an educator of young people, I have a say. And I have had my say in classrooms and in announcements and videos and giving homilies from the pulpit. I have had a say. As an educator of young people, I can tell you that the pamphlets hanging from my door that link breast cancer with contraception and the pamphlets that link abortion and contraception and abortion and breast cancer are flying off those doors faster than I can replace them. Our young people in our schools are devouring and want to know more and are no longer content to be fed the lies that your organization continues to put out. Our young people are hungry for the truth and our young people are hungry as well for the church's understanding of what authentic human sexuality looks like and how to express that self-giving love and that self-sacrificial love in the sexual act that takes place. Our young people are devouring and want to know and taste that knowledge, and they are devouring that truth. I have a say, and we have a say. We have had no doubt in the long term that truth, with a capital T, will certainly prevail. We also, though, continue to fight in the short term. We don't think that our country is worth giving up on. We believe that it is still possible to win, even in the short term, to see the truth prevail and to see your lies exposed. So we have a say, and I have a say. We have no doubt that in 20 or 50 or 100 years, other societies and other civilizations will look back and will clump your organization in with the slave traders, the Nazis, the communists, all those groups that have always sought to oppress people. But we're not happy with the truth simply being exposed in the long term. We also fight for the short term. I have a say, and we have a say, and I say this. The Catholic Church has certainly been humbled in recent decades through the sins and crimes of some of our priests and bishops and other people acting in the name of the Church. We have been humbled by that, and we have been brought low, and we have learned much from this sacrifice, from this horrible experience. I have a say, and I have this to say, though. You better knock us out now. You and the President, in seeking to silence the Church and seeking to silence those who also believe that they have a say, you and the President better knock us out right now. Because, Cecile, I can promise you, here comes the Catholic Church. Our seminaries and our convents are bursting at the seams, at least those convents that have not bought in to your agenda and the culture of death and the lies that you seek to spread. Our convents and our seminaries are exploding at the seams with young people ready to spread the love and to satiate that thirst that our young people have for authentic teaching, for truth, who are no longer content to be fed by your lies. The young people who have seen a third of their generation wiped out by abortion. Our generation is now coming into service in the church, will not be swayed by your lies and your half-truths. Cecile, I can promise you, here comes the Catholic Church. You and the President and this mainstream media have awakened a sleeping giant. And priests and bishops who may have in the past been content to remain quiet as you continue to spread lies and deception, that's no longer the case. And the truth is being rained down upon people everywhere 
about authentic teaching, about the truth of life, the truth of human sexuality, and the gift that it offers to all people. Cecile, here comes the Catholic Church. You and your organization have set yourself up as a sworn enemy of our faith from the very beginning, from your foundress, Margaret Sanger, who interestingly, we never hear much about from you. We would think that an organization would actually be proud of their founders. I wonder why you aren't. But we have heard from her, Margaret Sanger, all the way through to you. We have seen that you are a sworn enemy of the Catholic Church. You have set yourself in direct opposition to us. And while that battle may have gone on quietly in the shadows in the past, our two sides now step into the ring. The gloves are off and we step into the spotlight, ready to do battle with one another. Before beginning, let me acknowledge that certainly you have every measurable advantage. The mainstream media is in your corner. The President of the United States is in your corner as well. By every standard that is possible to be measured by human eyes, you have the advantages. Just as the giant Goliath had every measurable advantage against a young boy named David. But I have a say, and we have a say. We've gone long enough, and we're going to get it on because we don't get along, as Muhammad Ali once said. And as J.R.R. Tolkien, the famous Catholic novelist, once noted, the board is set, the pieces are now in motion. At last we come to it, the great battle of our age.